Scorpio friends, welcome, I'm David. Going to do your singles read for mid June today. Um, sun, moon, rising, and Venus in Scorpio. Singles, super singles. So, what we're doing here is we're just solely focusing on your person. I'm asking the cards to show us who the right one is, not your next ex problem, your next ex wife, ex husband. Uh, but the one that's right for you, as you're right for them. We're doing this on the day of the eclipse. Okay, I don't exactly know when it's going to be. It could be now. I haven't really looked. I'm kind of like leaving myself open. It's fun. <laughs> I'm not trying to control everything so much. I have some crazy transits, so I figured like uh, mine are so crazy I could die. So why focus on too much, <laughs> you know? Uh and so here we are. It is an auspicious time, though. I mean, it's a lot of popping. You see it in the readings. A lot of turmoil, a lot of changes. But we're asking in the name of light and love, spirit, only so it serves the greatest good. Can you give us advice for our Scorpio friends? And show us and reveal to us their soulmate here. Um, some Something significant that would help us identify them. Some depth of understanding of their person here. More than just do they have a mustache or do they have big breasts or not <laughs> if I see that we'll call it out though um, we're going to look at the emotional aspect that's the nine of pentacles over the four swords and a little bit of wind coming up here we'll look at the intellectual aspect that's the five of wands over the queen of swords pull eight cards and we're also going to look at their sexual aspects and love nature, which is uh, Seven of Wands, interesting, over the um, Knight of Wands, or Six of Wands. So, boy, that's a, that's interesting energy there. <laughs> Definitely passionate and fiery. There's uh, going to be, a, uh, I'm not saying slam bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm saying like crazy passionate, like the clothes uh, are off within like a second and you know, you're already gonna be pregnant, um, you know, by the time you hit the horizontal position type of energy. I would be surprised to see a Aries Mars showing up. Let's see as we go along. This is their lifestyle core values, Nine of Swords. Over the Eight of Swords, wow. That's an interesting uh, combination there, guys. See what I make of that. Um, hmm. I'm kind of wondering right now, is that the eclipse starting or is that a, a cloud passing on? And I thought the butterflies had stopped, but now they're back. They weren't here early when I started, right after dawn. I'm out here a good couple hours over. Um, so now they're coming out. They must need a real, I don't know, it was pretty warm when we started, so they must really need to, maybe they need the sun to come up. But they're out now. I hope you can see them. It's beautiful. You know, they're launching, I believe, off into the gulf there. All right, so back to your person here, Scorpio. Um, the Nine of Pentacles and the Four Swords. Um, this in their emotional position. I look for the moon here. Um, I think we're looking at probably a Capricorn moon. It's a butterfly right there. So you you're gonna and it that's the first one that stopped by to say so beautiful. It's that yellow color like of my logo. It says meaning for me. Uh, Google or YouTube. Just Google. Uh, Butterfly spirit messenger. Yeah, nothing's an accident in a tarot reading. So I'll give you a moment to do that. We'll have a sip of coffee. You know, I just need a sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, they're, they're very stable. Um, this is someone that uh, doesn't need other people to fulfill them. Doesn't need probably other people to uh, help them. Um, and why that is is because they would focus a lot uh, of their energy on self-care, taking care of themselves, um, um, being stable and strong, definitely feeling like a Capricorn moon energy. Um, and I think they had some kind of little bump, uh, 
when they, I don't know if it's called a little bump, but I see a lot of horrendous childhoods. Um, this is like, you know, maybe mom and dad split up at some point. Um, and it's had some kind of effect upon them. Um, see as we go along. Um, you know, with them showing up intellectually with the queen of swords and they have this four swords. Remember, I didn't say they're perfect. said they're your person. I think what you see is, and, I, I, and they may not be aware of this really, uh, but this energy from where they suffered this really kind of abandonment and stuff uh, might have been a time when they first were made to feel vulnerable. It's like they didn't like that, you know. Uh, and so a lot of their nature, you have the Five of Wands and the Queen of Swords. Um, they're extra strong. And it may also explain Nine of Pentacles. Uh, because they don't want to, they they don't want to ever feel like they're in that position again where they felt so vulnerable, you know. Um, and really, uh, what I would tell them if there's somehow a cross watcher, I guess there are cross watchers. I kind of didn't wrap my mind around that. Um, you know, it's it's okay, you know, because um, if that's how you have to play it, that's how you have to play it. And it doesn't mean you can't be emotionally available, and they won't be. They'll definitely be emotionally available to you. Um, it's just you may see them present a side of themselves uh, that's uh, kind of like a facade that's a little, a little bravado to it, and not noticeably. But I mean, they're just going to hide their vulnerability. I guess that's what I'm saying. You won't see their vulnerability. You'll see more of this Queen of Swords energy, you know. Um, so you'll see someone that's stable. I mean, okay, this is someone, how are you doing? And they could be in the dark night of the soul to their toes. And you could even be their friend maybe asking this. And maybe, so they actually could maybe tell you. But they say, you know, I'm all right. I'm all right. You know. Um, but they sort of just sort of refuse to go there, you know. So they may have a little trouble with the shadow stuff, you know. You, you see it again over here, Nine of Swords and the uh, Eight of Swords, um, which I think is kind of like this the karmic thing. Be interesting. Look at their uh, astrological chart because um, it's going to be there. Um, but it's like as much as they try to avoid dealing with this issue here, might have been around the loss of a father. Feels like something like that. <clears throat> Otherwise, could be the loss of a sibling. That could be because you have a lot of damage over here with the Nine of Swords and the Eight of Swords. But some kind of karmic thing where the more they try to avoid dealing with it and putting up this exterior. Um, so it's almost like with the Five of Wands, what they would present is uh, an energy of don't kind of don't even ask me how I'm doing. You know, it's like. It wouldn't necessarily be bad. It's like they would come across uh, like with maybe such high energy and stuff and maybe asking you how you're doing and kind of uh, being projective and out there and fiery kind of in nature. Um, you really don't see. Look how contemplative this Queen of Swords is here. Never see one like that. We said that look about her like she's at some kind of ceremony. She's supposed to be honoring the troops or something. And she's just bored of tears. And she's thinking probably about, like, her lover, I imagine, you know, me. Um, but, yeah, so that kind of energy, like, just sort of wanting to ignore it and acting like it's not a big deal is coming through there. But as much as they do that, over here with the Nine Ten of Swords, it's like it crops up in their life. And I bet you they say something like that. Um, you know, as much as I try to avoid the unforeseen loss of things... Nevertheless, it seems uh, things keep uh, coming up. This could be someone who had uh, lost many jobs. Uh, someone that is a business person that has uh, started and gone bankrupt, started and gone bankrupt. Um, they might have not had a real successful business life. I'm going to put it that way. Um, and it could even be not a very uh, successful um, love life, you know. Um, the only thing I could see here in terms of lifestyle, um, they're going to need to communicate. Maybe more than they even know. Because that's a lot of what the problem is, like the and not communicating. So you're coming in as a soulmate, 
you know, maybe you're someone, um, um, Scorpio, you have a lot of depth and a lot of understanding of things. Um, a, a little bit like a child, you might have to say to them, well, like you'd say to a child, well, you're, you're throwing a tantrum because uh, your little brother ate your pizza. And so you're angry, you know, and you're, so you're letting them know how they feel. It's a little bit like that. Maybe you're almost giving them permission to feel their feelings and express themselves um, um, when they're insecure or something like that. And so I want to look at the Venus energy and the Mars energy here, which is our sex and love styles. And definitely got Aries. I think you might be dealing with an Aries, uh, Venus, and Mars person. And I get Aquarius Sun with this Queen of Swords. And there's that detachment. You take the Cat Moon and the Queen of Swords. Um, they're able to be very rational. They, they're not overwhelmed by emotions and everything. And with an Aries uh, Mars and an Aries Venus, it's actually good, definitely good for me as a reader, uh, because in an astrologer, there's a uh, Mar. Well, it's a little tricky because Mars is exalted, or Mars is at home, you know, in Aries. That's perfect. So uh, amazing, a lot of passion, very fiery, a uh, fiery sex. Uh, they're going to be focused on the genitals, man or woman. I mean, it's like get right down to business. I'll be honest with you, I had me uh, that. And um, it was great. And what uh, what I did, I don't know, just intuitively, uh, was, and it was great. <laughs> it wasn't a problem. Uh, but at, let them come and just go fast and it's fun. And let them come like five or six or whatever many times. And then you could kind of settle, quiet, slow it down and a little more cuddling and that kind of thing. And, um, and because to me, being a water sign uh, lover, you know, it's just kind of getting a handle on this and s slowing it down a little bit uh, without, like, ruining it. Because, like, you don't want to put this flame out. And that's what they bring to sex, definitely, a flame. And I think they bring that to love, too. You know, Aries Venus is going to challenge you. It can be a little frustrating. They, they really like, look at this. This is the righteous defense of the castle. But they like to poke you. They like to argue a little bit. They don't like you to be a pussy. Uh, they want you to push back, you know. Um, it, it doesn't have to be at a level of toxicity. It could even be playful. It can be very playful energy, too, anyway, with the Venus and Aries. Um, and typically, to be honest with you, when the Venus and Aries, this is your soulmate, doesn't matter. Um, typically, they're, they're just not going to fall in love with you unless the relationship they perceive benefits them in some way. Now, that sounds a little cold, but on the other hand, I mean, really, that should be the way it works, isn't it? I mean, you feel like this person is the right one for me, and it's going to benefit my life, too. Uh, you're always going to have to make compromises. It's uh, always uh, with a relationship. You just want to do exactly what you want to do. you got to be single. Uh, so why would you get with someone if they didn't serve you some way? But they can be very clear about it. Uh, almost uh, think of a transactional relationship with them. Um, I'm not even saying that's a bad thing because again it sounds kind of cold and terrible but it might be how they think of it um, but then you know I think they get a bad rap like once they bond with someone I don't think they're necessarily types gonna run off you know with someone else um, you know um, so that um, with this reading you definitely don't have to worry about that um, so there's someone's gonna be wanting to take control in bed uh, in terms of the relationship, the main thing with them, um, they're going to want it to be vibrant and uh, fun and outgoing, you know. Um, and in terms of their, um, boy, I think with their work, it hasn't gone well for them. And you might actually find them being unemployed, you know. And um, it's like I get the feeling like they have a feeling. And they might tell you, it's like no matter what I do, and how I try to make it work, you know, and how good a job I do or think I do, you know, I end up uh, running into problems. Um, and something to do around the way they think, so, you know, uh, if that's any help. Um, but I have the feeling like with you, you might be the one person that they feel like they can talk to 
And so I think like as advice, and I think you would do this anyway, but as, as advice looking at this person, um, um, they're, they're the, the prince that's the frog. And if someone kisses them just right, I think like it, they're going to like bring out all kinds of their best side, if that makes sense. And so, like, be a little delicate. Don't uh, criticize them um, unnecessarily. Uh, or be very thoughtful about how you do it. Um, the kind of thing. Uh, because I think they're going to feel like they're, you're, like, maybe the one person their whole life. They're going to say, like, I feel like I can trust you. And I feel like I can talk to you. Because I think they really have a hard time, you know, um, it's not a cup here so they have a really hard time you know um of talking and expressing their emotions you know dealing with their emotions they've been shut down a lot so um that may be part of your soul work together <clears throat> that'll be in the uh the sinistry too uh probably around the moon and mercury how you're relating to each other there in your charts you might see something significant so thank you Scorpio, Scorpios uh, for joining me and uh, give me a like, thumbs up, appreciate it. Appreciate it by subscribing. That uh, really helps a lot. We're mid-June guys, thank you.